fake news, right? We have we have fake news now. So how do we even get, we have to get an authentic blog post and authentic news content. But uh, it's a, it's an interesting conversation. But before I get into that, uh, the reason we're able to make this podcast happen is because of the sponsor. So uh, give a shout out to Nine Spokes. Uh, Nine Spokes is the sponsor of FOMO Fans. They have a smart dashboard for small businesses to really sync all of that data and allow you to make actionable business decisions in real time. Check out ninespokes.fomofans.live. Just throw that in your browser, ninespokes.fomofans.live. You can check them out. If you also follow me on Facebook or on Instagram, I shared out a video tutorial on really what, uh, how you sign up for Nine Spokes, what's the dashboard look like, and uh, some tips and tricks. It's under two and a half minutes long, so you can check it out on any of those channels, or even check out my pinned tweet on Twitter at twitter.com slash isocialfans. And thank you for the sponsor. So authenticity, and I think authenticity is one that is extremely fun conversation because I don't believe it's a buzzword. I believe it's something that um, many struggle with, and we many struggle with that for, for obvious reasons because, you know, we've always kind of been told, you know, to put on you know, or put on a happy face and make sure that your first impression is a good impression and that anything you post online, uh, you know, I always say, you know, don't po- for me, I don't post something online unless I don't want my mom to see it because I'm a mama's boy. And if I'm going to post online, I have to be okay with my mom seeing it. And if I'm afraid of my mom seeing a piece of content, more than likely, I'm not going to press the button and, and push it out there. And so when you're, when you're thinking about authenticity and you're thinking about, you know, this digital kind of world that we live in, it really does become extremely noisy. And it not only to become noisy, but it sometimes really, it gets difficult to understand, you know, is someone promoting that brand? Is someone getting paid to do that? You know, we've, we've kind of learned that, you know, nobody goes to a website and buys a product because the website says it's the greatest, or you don't buy a plant because you're, you know, just because your mom said so, you know, told you what her favorite plants were, more likely than not, you're going to, you're going to ask your friends, you're going to ask people that you can relate to. And I've been saying this for a long time. We've always believed that people buy from people they like, but like my good friend, Jim Keenan says, you know, they all, they just don't buy from people that they, they don't like. They, they oftentimes buy from people that they have no relationship with. And I will say in this digital world, moving forward, it's actually, let's take it a step further. People buy from people they like, And people buy from people they can relate to. If they have no relationship with you, more than likely in this digital world, they're no longer going to be buying from you. And if they don't like you, they're sure as hell not going to be buying from you. So when you look at business and authenticity and how these things kind of uh, come to bat, I'm going to kind of cover some of these these questions that I was asked um, on this blog post interview. You know, and one of them was really, you know, as you scale, as you grow your audience, um, how do you think about authenticity? And I, you know, I can remember, you know, replying to every tweet and, uh, you know, engaging every single person I possibly could when I had 2,000 followers on Twitter and I only had a certain amount of followers on social as a whole. But as you scale, as you grow, as your um, you become further and further away from the action, it does become more difficult to you know, kind of engage. It comes more difficult to always stay in the know. But here's the thing. I don't think that gives you an excuse to be less authentic. I think as you grow, as your audience becomes, you know, larger, as you become, you know, as Gary Vaynerchuk went from a, a wine library guy to a guy who had a, you know, an online show to a, a podcast that wrote one book, that wrote two books, that wrote three books, as as he kind of grew, and I, and I love using Gary for this for this example because you know Gary, I I believe is as authentic as they come. You know Gary knows for a fact that he would gain more speaking gigs if he was a, if he was not cussing on stage because let's face it, in some places are offended by his language, some places don't know how to handle that. But he also realizes that if he has to be something that he is not, if he has to try to think in his head, oh my goodness, I can't drop the f bomb 
Tom here. I can't share my opinion. Then it takes away from who he is. And that is authentic. And, you know, some people cuss or some people um, use certain language as a um, as a strategic uh, you know weapon. And you can do that, as, you know, as part of your program. But when you are who you are and that's part of your language, that's part of how you deliver your message, you know, owning that, in my opinion, would make me want to hire him even more because he's not only is standing by his principles, but he's like, you know, take it or leave it. And if you leave it, he's okay with that, right? And that's one of the things that I think really becomes hard because as you scale, as you get larger, not only do you have to continue to engage and continue to convey, but this is something I I can really, you know, if you want to start to put this out there, if you want to look and find, okay, I want to know if someone is authentic, Here's a great way to figure it out. Listen to them on a podcast. Listen to them on a video interview. Listen to them when they're getting interviewed on TV. Listen to what they post on Facebook. Listen to what they share um, in their email newsletter. And are they consistent? Do they have the same message across all of those channels? Do they have the, the, the do they do they contradict themselves? Because it's really funny in this digital world we live in, it is really easy to call someone's bullshit. Like you can call someone out that is full of crap very easily. And the reason that is, is because it's all of our information is out there. But the problem with that is we often don't do the looking. We don't go and look to see, did that person, you know, bash that brand a month ago on Instagram? And all of a sudden now that brand is sponsoring them and they're the biggest fans in the world, right? And I think authenticity not only comes with consistency, but it comes with consistency across different um, platforms. And it's why I love live video, right? the, The most powerful phrase on live video is saying, I don't know. And if you want to be authentic, you want to convey your message, you have to be okay with saying, I don't know. The reason politicians can't use live video is because they're not authentic. They don't know how to say, I don't know. Saying I don't know to them makes them feel weak. But yet we all realize that we know that politicians aren't perfect. And we all realize that nobody is perfect. I believe perfection is a fairy tale. And so when you, when you're looking at this and you're starting to think about authenticity and you're starting to think, how do you scale authenticity and how do you drive the power of authenticity as you grow your digital footprint? You have to remember that authenticity comes from every aspect of your, of your message and everything you share, everything you do. And sometimes saying, I don't know, um, is the best way you could possibly, uh, gain, you know, fans and credibility because, I want to I want to listen to here's me personally whenever I hear someone talking about something that matters to me right someone that's giving entrepreneur advice and they're asked a question about how to grow their small business and they've never grown a small business they're a successful entrepreneur they don't have employees they just are you know a solopreneur if they're able to say, you know, I don't really know about growing a small business because I haven't done that, but you know, here's what I've done as a, as an entrepreneur and I believe it might help you if you go into a small business. When someone's able to say I don't know, I'm going to subscribe to their stuff. I'm going to I'm going to buy in because that is that element of, hey, I understand what I do know and I'm okay separating what I don't know, right? And I think that's something that we really have to um, also understand. And then the, the other piece of this is, and I talk about this a lot on the show, um, and if you guys have heard this, you know, the biggest compliment I could possibly get as a keynote speaker is that when I get off stage and I have, you know, the, there's a line of people that you want to get the hugs and the selfies because that's what I, I preach. When someone comes up to me and says, Brian, you are the same person offline or on stage as you are online, that to me is the biggest win there is. Because as we become more digital, we're going to come more dependent, guess what? On our offline relationships. We are becoming so digitally connected that when we go offline, we no, it's no longer about online versus offline. It's now about when we go into 3D, are we continuing the conversation? Is that person that we met online the exact same person that is offline? And if you are not, you are dead to me. If you, if I met you online and, and you've conveyed this message and you stand up for these people and you and you're all about these things, and then I meet you offline and you are not that person, it is one and done. You have lost all credibility for me. And I think that world is is slightly scary for many businesses. It's scary for many brands and it's scary for many people because 
you know, when you're when you're aligning with brands and when you're aligning with, you know, uh, different things you do with work, you know, I believe every person that works for a company uh, tell has a responsibility or plays a role in telling that brand's story. But when you're working for a brand and you're conveying your message, sometimes you have to put it out there that says, you know, like this message is not uh, from my brand. It is from me individually. And for me, as someone that has been an influencer for multiple different brands, there's a couple of things that I've always I've always believed and, and I've refused to give this in, especially in influencer marketing. I've had a couple of brands come to me and say, Brian, you know, we want to work with you and we love that you're, you know, you believe on uh, authentic relationships with your community. You have an amazing community, but we want you to sign an exclusive deal with us. We don't want you to work with anyone else because, you know, that's kind of how we want to work. And I always let them know. I say, well, I appreciate that. And I, you know, I appreciate your, your desire to kind of lock me in and it means a lot to me. But if you want my authentic voice, if you want me to deliver what I deliver for other brands, you have to allow me to be independent. You have to 